Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at how to install Kali Linux onto a USB and we're going to add some persistence and we're also going to add some encryption you guys. Now for those that are new to this channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also hit that bell button as well and also comment down below if you have any questions or any issues. Now again, we're going to install Kali Linux on a USB and for those that are not familiar with Kali Linux, it's pretty much a penetration testing platform. Now there's quite a few things that we need before we actually do this and the first thing that we need is a USB or in this case the universal USB installer which is the application that we're going to use to actually burn the ISO image onto the USB now the next thing that you need is actually the ISO image and don't worry you guys I'm going to leave those links down in the description for you guys once you have this application open, the first step that we need to do is actually select the distribution. And what we're going to choose is actually Kali Linux, you guys. So once you find Kali Linux, go ahead and select that, and that is it. So the next step, which is number two, we're going to actually select the ISO image, and it's going to be the Kali Linux one. Now, don't worry, you guys. I'm going to leave the link down in the description. Lastly, we're going to select the device for the USB. In this case, I'm using an 8 gig. And at this point, all we need to do here is just hit the Create button. Now what you see here is a window which is saying that the USB and everything is ready to go and all you need to do is just click yes. Now at this point it's going to start loading the ISO image onto the USB and once this is done all we need to do is actually test the USB to actually boot into the Kali Linux and then we can proceed with the next step which is adding the persistence and the encryption onto the USB as well. So at this point, the installation is complete. The ISO is already burnt onto the thumb drive. I keep saying USB, I don't know why, but we're gonna call it thumb drive, you guys. Now at this point, we're gonna click close and proceed to the next step, which I want to verify that the ISO image is properly installed on the thumb drive and we're able to boot into the Kali Linux operating system. Now in this case, I'm gonna be using VMware and I'm gonna be using Workstation and what I'm gonna do actually here is boot into the firmware because what we're going to do is set up the sequence on the boot sequence. In this case, you see the BIOS setup utility here and we're going over to the boot tab and we're gonna simply and move the removal device all the way to the top so that way the system is able to boot into the Kali Linux operating system that is in case that is everything was properly installed and everything and as you can see we have Kali Linux already burnt onto the thumb drive and it's currently working great so at this point what we're going to do next is pretty much set up the persistence and some encryption onto this thumb drive the next step in this process is to load this program which is called Mini Tool Partition Wizard and I'm going to leave the download link in the description. So we're going to click on Disk and Partition Management and once you have this window here, we're going to go and actually select the thumb drive that we're going to create a partition. In this case, you're going to right click and select the Move and Resize option and you're going to receive this window here and what you see here is that the thumb drive that I'm talking about is the 8 gig one and you're going to drag this all the way to the left as far as you can you guys and once you actually do that all you need to do is just basically click OK now what you're going to see is two separate spaces here on your thumb drive one with the Kali Linux onto it and the other one that is completely empty and what you need to do here is actually right click and create a new partition now if you see this warning just go ahead and click yes to continue now at this point what you need to do here is go onto the file system drop down and what you're going to do is just basically select on formatted and once you have that go ahead and click OK don't worry about the partition label because we're going to actually do that in the next step so let's go ahead and hit apply you guys and next we're going to apply the changes by clicking yes and this should take no more than a couple minutes you guys so just leave it running and at this point all the all the changes are applied and they're successfully added onto this thumb drive and what we're going to do next is actually boot into the Kali Linux you guys so in this case we're going to boot into the live option here and we're gonna go ahead and let Kali Linux boot up and at this point once you receive the desktop we're going to actually open up a terminal you guys once you have the terminal open you guys what you need to do is execute a couple of commands here which is the fdisk space dash l space pipe space grep and we're going to simply and look for the sdb which are the device or the thumb drive that we currently created a partition 
to actually load the persistent mode and actually add encryption to it. Now, what we're going to do next is actually load or set up the encryption, which is the looks, right? And to do that is the following command, which is the crypt setup space dash dash verbose space dash dash verify dash passphrase space looks format and then space the device where we have the partition in this case it's going to be sdb2 or the path to it right which is four slash dev four slash sdb2 now at this point is going to ask you are you sure you want to overwrite data on this device or on this partition and you're going to simply in type yes in uppercase now the next thing that you're going to do is pretty much add a password you guys make sure you do not forget this password and what you need to do is just basically enter it and it's going to ask you to confirm once more once you put in the first time in this case there you go you need to verify the passphrase and it should not take that long because a partition is quite small so it's gonna complete very quickly in this case the command is successful right next what you're going to do is actually run the following command which is the crypt setup space looks open and then followed by the device or the partition where we're currently going to write changes or data to it which is the four slash dev four slash sdb2 and then we're going to simply and just name it however you want in my case i'm going to name it usb at this point you're going to be asked to enter the passphrase for that partition right and once you actually successfully enter that passphrase the command should complete normally. So the next thing that we need to do is actually make the file system onto that partition. And in this case, the following command is the way to do it, which is the mkfs.ext4, which that's the, the format that is going to be actually added. And then space upper L space persistence space dev four slash dev four slash mapper four slash USB. And as you notice, the USB is the one that we previously created, or that's how we named it previously, right? So just keep that in mind. Now, at this point, it's going to take just a little bit just to make sure it writes the changes that it needs to write to that partition. And in this case, once it's done, we can proceed to the next step, you guys. And the next step is very simple, and we're going to name that particular partition that we created or in this case the file system right and we're just going to simply and label it and that is the command which is the e2 label space dev four slash mapper four slash usb and then we're going to simply and call it persistence that's the label that we're going to actually call this new partition right where we're going to actually write the changes in a persistent mode now in this case what we're going to do next is make a directory in a mount point you guys and in order to do that we're going to simply and run the following command which is the mk dir space dash p forward slash mnt forward slash usb the next command that we're going to run is the following which is the mount space forward slash dev forward slash mapper forward slash usb and then a space forward slash mnt forward slash USB and once you have this command all you need to do here is to basically hit enter now the next command we're going to do is the following which is the echo double quote and then this is a forward slash space union and then we're going to simply close that by adding the double quotes again and then what we're going to do is actually do this greater less than sign space forward slash mnt forward slash USB forward slash persistence and then we're going to add an extension which is the .conf for configuration, right? So in this case, we already created a file within that mount point. And in this case, what we're going to do next is unmount that point by doing the umount space for slash dev for slash mapper for slash USB. Now the next thing that we're going to do is actually run the following command to actually close this partition and in order to do that we're going to do the following command which is the crypt setup space looks close space four slash dev and four slash mapper four slash usb and at this point all you need to do is just hit enter so at this point the last step that we need to do is actually reboot the system or wherever you have this thumb drive plugged into in this case what we're going to do next once we have this menu is we're going to simply select the live usb encrypted persistence now the reason why we're going to do that is because we're going to test by creating 
a folder on the desktop. In this case, like I said, we're going to test the persistence mode. Make sure that everything is properly configured. Now we're going to right click on the desktop and make a new folder. Now in this case, you can name it whatever you want, you guys. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to actually name mine persistence space test. Now once you have the folder on your desktop or anywhere that you might created it, all we need to do is reboot once more and we're going to simply in select the live USB encrypted persistence once more and once Kali finishes booting up and is actually logged into the desktop, we should be able to see the same folder. In this case, we're going to see the persistence space test and at this point we can confirm that the persistent mode is actually working so everything that we did is on point and that is it you guys thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to also hit that bell if you want to get notified on the next video also drop a like and like always i'll see you guys on the next video thanks